Let's have a look at ceilings, the brass quintet arrangement that I've done of the Lizzie McAlpine tune. I was originally going to do Erase Me and then suddenly this popped up on TikTok as a popular thing. So I jumped on that bandwagon and here we are. It's a great song. They're all, uh, the whole album is pretty spectacular, to be fair. Um, so I'd recommend checking it out if you don't know it already. Yeah, ceilings, this arrangement here. And the main thing I want to talk about in this one is sort of uh, a way of bringing the accompaniment in and out of sync with the main melody. So having sometimes it's doing its own separate thing and then occasionally it will join up. I've kind of used this in this arrangement uh, to basically build up to that final chorus where you realise that she's imagining this this fella that she's kissing and it's all it's all a lie and everyone goes mad on TikTok for it. So let's have a look at the score and see what's going on here. So at the very start, all of the harmony is kind of in rhythm with the vocals. I just cut out the intro because trying to recreate that guitar strumming intro on horns, you, you kind of can't really do it. So... Uh, I tried a few different intros and uh, none of them were working for me, so I just chopped it out. All of the melodies are kind of in sync with the top line at the start, but then go off on their own thing around here and let the melody just do its thing on top. And that sounds like this. And then those two are off on their own little journey here. Change it up. Set those expectations, break them down. And then that's the flugel 2 comes in, um, with a little corner response kind of esque thing, and then that just holds its note over on to the next bar to add some another layer of harmony essentially. And then this trickles on with the harmony parts or the accompaniment parts, just bouncing along, doing this great thing that you can do in any triple time, having two against three, it's just a really good way to add momentum and then you see they sort of sync up here on a sort of pentatonic gospel-esque kind of thing which sounds like this on its own which is just nice you're going between major the neighboring chord and then the next chord so this one's going between an e flat major and f minor e flat major chord and it sounds like this and then it becomes yeah d flat there's lots of add four chords in there this sort of sound this is kind of a suspension in there, but it's clashing, it's just lovely. It sounds like on the original recording, she's playing it with a couple of open strings on the guitar that are constantly ringing out, which causes that thing. It's quite a nice, uh, quite a nice sound. And then we've got the flugel and horn playing that little last bar of the thing. Now this bit, uh, this is the chorus, I guess. The melodies in the flugel horn two here, and you can see the backing parts are kind of in sync with each other. But then here we get a little, another one of those little pentatonic downwards bits. Which is nice. It's peppering in these little synchronized bits. Now I'm really, really quite happy with this section, the way I've sort of kept that strumming rhythm feel, but without trying to emulate the rhythm, the, the actual strumming. And they're kind of the way these backing parts kind of rise up to the melody. So it's almost, yeah, it's kind of a syncing up, but not quite a syncing up kind of thing. Um, syncing up, but filling in the space, I guess is what I'd say. It sounds like this. <laughs> from the uh, flugel one, which plays really nicely with the melody. It's kind of suspension-y, kind of thirds-y, kind of sixth-y, uh, it's a strange word. And then, yeah, carries on like that. Again, syncs up there. And then we've got, not in harmony, but the horn and trombone in octaves. The horn is very high in its range, which makes the melody sound even higher than it actually is in terms of actual pitch. Um, and then the trombone is just underneath supporting that to give you know give the horn some help. And then you've got these trumpets coming in and out of each other, dovetailing, which is quite nice. And then here's the here's the first time that all four, apart from the bass, uh, sync up together um, on one of those pentatonic things. Although admittedly the uh, horn and trombone are in octaves, so it's kind of only three voices, but you get the idea. Uh, carries on, carries on. And then this final, this is the final reveal, the big reveal that it's an imaginary boyfriend and she's actually really lonely and sad and everyone is sad about it. Um, so this song is incredibly well written as well, I might add. It's the harmony is pretty simple overall, but the choruses have uh, this wonderful, really dissonant note in it. Well, not really dissonant note, but very kind of 
unexpected note i guess so in the choruses i've changed the key from the original to a more brass friendly key it's like the original is like a major i think we're in e flat so very far away but um so let's go a flat major which is the four of our home there i don't know if i'm going out of shot or blurry but whatever so this is our home key e flat and we have a the chorus starts on the a flat major but then in the melody we've got this this is the sharp four of the thing or major seven is where it resolves to just stays in the same note when we resolve to the root and this is a lot of tension to be having in your chorus a lot of tension but then when we get to the final chorus where all is revealed lizzie sings a couple notes up in the scale so instead of getting that we actually get which is kind of more settled but also a lot is higher it's more it's, i don't know I've, i'm trying to analyze this thing i don't really have uh the experience in analyzing to talk eloquently about it but it's basically it's sick basically and i love it um and when we get this thing here we've got some really quite thick sounding chords going on um the inner parts are essentially block cording the melody, apart from this bit where we have some nice big accented bell-like things just to just to change it up because you don't want to be completely in sync all the time. That can get quite boring, um, adds to the drama. So let me just play you this last section and then we can all go home. Attention. So that's kind of all I wanted to touch on on this arrangement. I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown. If you've got any questions, do stick them below because I feel like I might have waffled a little bit, but you get the idea. Um, stick around for the next one. Subscribe, like, um, share, buy the sheet music, play it with your brass ensemble, have some fun. Catch you soon. <laughs>